We're going to take you to uh, Richmond, Texas, where the driver of a truck featuring an anti-Trump sticker is speaking out. You may recall the sheriff in that area threatened to have her charged. She was later picked up on a separate warrant, and she's speaking out now. After we bought this other vehicle, my husband saw a bumper sticker on the Internet and said he wanted to enlarge it, so we did. Where it was, that's where it was for the past 11 months till this was just brought into perspective um, in the enlightenment of Troy Nell sharing it on his Facebook page. I feel we are all entitled to our freedom of speech. We should stand together and always stand behind what you believe in that what it takes, to, and that is what it takes to make a change happen. Backing down doesn't change everyone's feelings. Let it be known how you feel that's what makes a change. That's what I stand support, stand behind. We are a diversified world and everyone should be comfortable no matter what race, religion, or belief you may have. We are all equal. Not any one of us is any better than anyone else. Everyone's voice should be heard. And I'm just one person, but if I can be used as bait for Troy Nails to try to gain approval for him to gain supporters in his upcoming race for Congress, against Pete Olson, then this is how the system works. Pick on the people who are vulnerable and step in and turn their lives around for gain. I feel that is really crazy. How much scandals go on behind the badge and leadership because they have a title? A lot of things run through my mind versus that. I just feel it could be done, uh, have been done a whole lot of a different way than it was. That's all I have for right now. You guys have any questions? Well, um, in retrospect to that, in the living nightmare part, I, I wouldn't say it that way. I think that's the terms that Ron had used. But to me, he actually put us more out there and more recognized than it ever has been before. And it, to me, it's been coming back as a more positive for going ahead and standing up for not backing down. It does not bother me. I'm, I'm always looking at the positive. The negatives, I don't even read them. They're brought to my attention, I don't read them. But the ones that are brought to my attention about my children seem to be a lot of cyberbullying going on. And that is not right. My children are not the one driving that. I'm driving our truck 90% of the time. That's what I stand behind. The F word on the back, it's not teaching your kids to say it or to know that word. Most of these children have learned it way before they saw it on a vehicle. Right. They're seeing it in our TV shows. They're hearing it in our music. They are hearing it from their friends. Peer pressure. And then we put the president on for his speeches. What, what are we teaching our next generation of presidents to be? Because if you can go out there and go ahead and say, and I'll say it, if you can say grab those women by the pussy, you can delete that if you want. But he says it, nobody deleted it. What, what is that statement in comparison to what's on the back of the truck? My kids, they support 100%. Um, you're welcome to ask them, they, yeah. and they're welcome to talk on their own if they want to. Is there anything you guys want to say, you know, in support of your mom or any, anything at all, having gone through this entire ordeal? Um, I support I'm sorry, we just need to hear the audio. Thank you. Um, I support her 100%. Like, I do get hateful messages every day, constantly, and then again, I do get people who are on my side, but, I mean, in the end, it's already done. So, I mean, I'm glad that she spoke up. Somebody had to do it, and I'm glad it was hers so I can support her. You feel proud of Yes, her. most definitely. Can you talk about that? That's something you're learning from your mom, that she's stuck her, you know, Well, my mom has always her. taught us to stand for what we believe, and she's just showing, like, she raised us all the right way, and, I mean, we do take after her. It's 100%. <laughs> Lisa? Lisa? Um, I just don't like how everybody in my family is getting these messages. Like, what is he going to do about the situation? Like, we're getting F your family and stuff. That's disrespectful. Like, you don't know us. You just hear what 
you're hearing right now. I, um, I'm 18. I'm with my mom. I live right by my mom, like literally right by my mom. And she never teached us to cuss or nothing. Like, we, uh, we know right from wrong. My little six-year-old sister, if she reads something, she was like, oh, I'm not allowed to say that. They know from right from wrong. Parents are supposed to teach your kids right from wrong. So hearing my mom say a cuss word, she's an adult. It's, it's right. Like, she could say what she wants. But I don't know. I just don't like how people are judging us because what they hear. You haven't been with my mom for 18 years. Like, that's my hero right there. She's <laughs> everything. Yeah. All right. Very good. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about the new sticker? Can you talk about where it came from? Have any more been made? Why do you want to put it on your truck? Well, it came to mind. Um, my husband was talking in the vehicle one day, and he's like, we need to put up there the Troy nail sticker that we ha currently have on there. I'm like, well, I ran it by some of my kids and they're like, well, I don't know, it's kind of a bold statement. And I'm like, well, you know, he didn't think twice before he went and put us out on Facebook and put me on blast, involved my family and everything else. So, you know, it's not two wrongs make a right. It's making my statement and saying, if you're gonna put me on blast and you wanna get, gain some votes, let's put the real Troy out there and give you what you wanted. Um, so my, and I, my husband said, I'm going to go get that done. Me, I contacted the lawyer and said, see anything against this? You're free to do whatever you want. It's freedom of speech, you know? So put it on yesterday. And no hate towards his family. Cause I, don't, I don't target families like, these, like people do around the world, some here. But the, ne the positive outweighs the negative. That's what we need to get across. It's positive. We have people from every race stopping us, wanting to shake your hand, want you to come to pull to the side to take a picture. The word is getting out there. These, um, there's Hispanics out there that have stopped me on the side and said, you're doing what we can't do. Keep moving forward. That inspires me even more because people back down and don't want to stand for what they believe in. That's why we're in the world we're in today. So you just yep. made the one sticker? Pardon? You just made the one Troy Nail sticker? Um, we added the yeah uh, and then the Troy Nail sticker. Okay. Sarah, what can you say about this alleged fraud case and what was your relationship with Gina? Um, all of anything questioning that um, is to do with a criminal case, you'll have to defer to my lawyer. Okay. Mr. Milton, what is the, what is the, what, describe the, the case and her relationship with Gina. What I'm uh, at liberty to discuss at this time, it's an investigation involving an individual that she resided with back in 2014. Um, I'm just beginning my investigation, so I'm not at liberty to discuss all the details, but we will, um, as we proceed, we will reveal more details. And I think, from what I can tell so far, you'll be very surprised about what the truth of the matter is. Yes, absolutely. We are considering filing a civil rights action against the sheriff for violating her constitutional rights. What would that be? Well, and that time at frame, that... Well, we won't move with, uh, without deliberation. We want to be careful and make sure we fully investigate it. Uh, we hope also that authorities, including the Texas Rangers, and the FBI will have some interest in this matter and, and investigate it as well as an abuse of authority. But the ACLU has already expressed an interest in it, so there will be plenty of people on hand, hopefully, to assist in protecting our freedoms. How far do you think you guys can go? Because we got another sign, but you know, we wonder if he's just, I don't know, we don't know what he's going to say and then the you know, response. Well, I think we're fortunate in Fort Bend County because our district attorney has spoken. He's the ultimate law enforcement authority in this county, and he said this is not illegal, okay? And he didn't uh, uh, obfuscate that. He just simply said this is not legal. There's nothing there. So this is also following on Cohen versus uh, California that has a very similar case, has ruled that this is protected speech. Very similar words. So... Uh, anyone that has a sticker like this is within their rights under the, the U.S. Constitution. Brian, if Sheriff Nelt apologizes, I know you had asked to be demanded for an apology. If he were to apologize, would that make it better? Would it fix this? Or what, what would? I think we're past that point because he's threatened her with prosecution mm -hmm. and acted like a cyber bully in doing so. 
He has professionals on staff. None of this was necessary. So no apology won't, won't work. And we need to take a stand as a community and make sure this doesn't happen again. I agree with him. Um, we do all need to take a stand because if this can happen to me um, and our family, and a lot of people wouldn't have went this far with it. I know how the people are. They back down. And he would have got what he wanted, but uh, he messed with the wrong person, for one. That's right. And secondly, if I can do this, it might encourage other people to stand up for their rights as well and know that their voice will be heard. So you don't want apology at this point? Apology would not help. My only message to him is, I know being in the law business, if you really want to look for somebody and know somebody, you have computer access and everything to it. And I'm not that hard to find. My name and my license match to where I live. I've been stopped multiple times, Sugarland, Stafford area and stuff, and by a Rosenberg officer. They all wanted to give me a ticket and tell me to remove it. And I'm like, when you can show me on the books where you can write that ticket out and what code number it is, I'll accept and sign that ticket. Nobody could show me that. They laughed and now officers, some of them wave and so, some have even in Harris County told me to speed up a little so they can get behind me and get a good picture. They love it. <laughs> so, I mean, this, he thinks he's speaking for everybody. Yes, there is some people that object. I agree. We don't all see the same. Right. But there is rules and laws to be abided by and I feel like he, if he really wanted to, why would you put your phone number out there and have me looked for? He should have looked at me, looked for me, and wanted to talk to me one on one instead of involving cyber space to go out, cyber bullying that's incurred to my children. Nothing, none of it bothers me. I need to let him know. It actually makes me want to stand up more and more because he did it. I just don't like my children coming into attack, like for supporting their beliefs as well. So I've taught them, ignore them, just look past them, and they do. They're kind of learning to laugh about it as well now. Do you have any plans for any future I haven't gotten that far yet into it. Our truck is pretty well, serves enough statement for right now. <laughs> we done? Any further questions? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I stated earlier, I, you know, little children seeing it, um, no, it's not appropriate, but at the same time, your, your grandchildren, when they see that, they should have been taught that that's not something as a child you say, but when you... Beca May I respond to that? Uh, Mr. Crookshank is, a, is an attorney, and I know he's full aware of the Supreme Court precedent. The Supreme Court has said that it's a matter of taste and style, that this is the individual's choice. Now, what he's asking, there is no expectation of privacy while you're driving around. When you leave your home, you're in public. When you're in your home, yeah, you have a right to privacy, and you could dictate what information comes into your home. But when you're riding around, the Supreme Court has already declared that this is a fundamental right. Now, these words may be offensive and aggravate some people's sensibilities, but we're talking about freedom of expression. Just like the Supreme Court said, one person's vulgarity is another person's lyric. That's what this case is about. And we just celebrated Veterans Day uh, just a few weeks ago. and. We know that many of those veterans have risked their lives for the very freedoms that we enjoy today. Uh, we can't decide who gets those freedoms and who don't. Those freedoms are for all Americans, all citizens of the United States of America. And so she was well within her, her rights as an American citizen. Uh, we have one uh, final speaker uh, that joined us today that is a, a well-respected person of the media, of the clergy. Yeah, I just want to make out one point that was uh, brought up to me. This is no different than what we see in common day traveling around this city. Someone in the act of rage flips the finger off to someone. You know, is, is that a criminal act? Should the sheriff investigate that? No. 
Right, right. So. yeah. And so uh, we have uh, Minister Dr. Robert Muhammad, who is a Fort Bend resident. Uh, he decided to come in today, and he's holding something very fundamental that we're speaking about today. He's holding an actual copy of the Constitution of the United States of America. Uh, Minister Robert Muhammad. Come up to me. I don't want to stand alone. Thank you. Uh, and I don't want to step on the story. I want you all to keep the focus on this family and their case. But on background, if there's some B-roll for you in case something may happen to me one day and you can play this back again. I'm standing here with the Constitution in my hand because this is the 230th year celebration or observation of the signing of the Constitution in Philadelphia on September 17th, 1787, 230 years ago. One of the factors that almost uh, didn't allow the Constitution to be ratified by the states when it was sent to them was the fact that it was missing a Bill of Rights. The first act of the Congress when it was convened, once the, the, con the Constitution was ratified, was to pass 10 of the first 12 amendments that were offered in this Constitution. The greatest of all of the amendments in the Constitution is the First Amendment. Freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of religion, freedom to come and to assemble, to petition our government for, for uh, our grievances. And any one who steps on one's constitutional rights, especially that First Amendment, <laughs> is someone that we must stand up against and for those we stand up for, regardless of creed, class, or color. The last point I'll make is simply this. People use the flag and our veterans sometimes as political props in this kind of fake patriotism. When Americans pledge allegiance to the flag. So we've just been listening to Karen Fonseca and her representatives. Karen Fonseca is the uh, Texas woman whose truck had an anti-Trump sticker on it. It included some profanity. And the uh, sheriff in the area expressed some uh, uh, concern about her. He uh, said that he had received complaints and suggested on Facebook that he would love to charge her with disorderly conduct. She was arrested after that arrested for an outstanding warrant unrelated to her truck. Her attorneys and her are suggesting that this was a violation of her First Amendment right, her freedom of expression, and an abuse of power. And they are threatening uh, a lawsuit as a result. And as you can see, that she remains defiant, though she says she's received a lot of threats online because of her sticker. In fact, she's so defiant that according to our uh, CBS affiliate in uh, Houston, she's added another sticker some profanity, and the name of the sheriff, Troy Nels.